And welcome back to another segment of Focus and Savas Kiriakidis joins us. Uh, that's easy for you to say, a little more difficult for me, but thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Welcome to Claiborne County. And uh, you've got a big story to tell. We've got lots of things to talk about. But sure. What, you, you're from Chattanooga, from the Chattanooga area. What brings you to Claiborne County? Well, the election. Um, okay. Claiborne County is in the third district, the U.S. Congressional District of Tennessee. Um, and I had not previously been here. Mm -hmm. um, although I'm an outdoorsman and I like to spend a lot of time just south of here and I uh, do a little fishing, I have not been up here, um, but I did come up this week. Right. And uh, also I want to meet the folks. I just right. want to get out and, and see the district, physically see it, meet the people, listen to the people, talk with the people. What a novel idea for a candidate. Huh? <laughs> That's unheard of this day and time. <laughs> You've got an interesting background. You are a uh, uh, spiritual person, a religious person, but you're, all, you're in the military. Uh, major in special forces. So if you will, for those of you that aren't acquainted with you, just sort of uh, talk with the people in Claiborne County and in Bell County. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you, you did hit some of the important parts. Uh, you can't talk to me for too long, for too many minutes, without hearing a little bit about my spiritual background. But uh, as a spiritual guy, I will say that we're pretty adamant about not being religious. Uh, so okay. we, we <laughs> make those distinctions. We're not religious, okay. we're spiritual. Um, but I am a major in Special Forces. I'm the Command Judge Advocate for 20th Special Forces Group, which has a headquarters in Birmingham, companies in about seven or eight states. Uh, I own a restaurant in Chattanooga, so small business owner as well. Um, and when I'm in, when I'm in uh, the Army, my job is to be the lawyer. Uh, I advise on international law. I advise on the law of war. Um, and make sure that we enforce discipline, r Army regulations. We stay clear of any fouls with spending and congressional appropriation stuff for my commanders and things like that. So I tell people, you know, we always get this sly comment about, oh, another lawyer. I say, yeah, but there's a different kind, the kind that jumps out of airplanes, fight ba fights bad guys, and wears a uniform when he's practicing law for you. So that's a little bit different. Um, but I do think I bring a good mix to the table as a candidate, and, and that's the thing that's interesting. Small business experience, real experience at the place where the dollar meets the cash register, as well as a military background, the only one in this race that is from that background. And uh, what, again, what an idea. A congressman that actually knows what it means to, to feel the economy's ups and downs, and also what it means to wear the uniform. Okay, now you, you said something we might need to go clear up, and perhaps sure. I asked the wrong question. Uh, but you said yes to spiritual. Yes. No to religious, but most of the people, almost all the people watching this program are very religious, so you better, you I better you. explain that. Well, the Pharisees were religious <laughs> in the Bible. Okay. They, they stuck uh, to the, the letter of the religion, but they didn't have yeah. the spiritual relationship. So to me, my Christian faith is about a real relationship with the living God. It's not about um, uh, checking the block on all the practices. But you have no problem with religion. No, uh, but I'll tell you what. We've got to hammer that home, or people are going to be, I got you. Going to be I got anti, <laughs> anti solace if we don't. No, so. no, I got you. Uh, <laughs> no, what okay. I tell folks is, I, I'm not, I don't think we should bring religion into government. I think right. we should bring God into government. Okay, I agree so, with that. You know yeah. what I mean? That's, that's a difference. <laughs> okay. Uh, out of all the issues that's going on today, we've talked about them on the radio. Uh, we've talked about taxes. We've talked about health care. We've we talked about a number of things. Uh, I think probably we could sum it up all under one it, and many people feel that the federal government is just getting too big trying to tell us everything that we do take care of us from the cradle to the grave the government knows more than we do about it running our own lives I think when you put all the bits and pieces together that's what you come up with so uh, with that said what do you what do you want to uh, do what do you want to achieve why did you decide to seek this office obviously you're you've got a successful business you're in the military so why uh, enter a new field, so to speak? Well, I, I surveyed the political landscape. Um, one of the things that impresses me in my I was late to the military. I didn't join until I was 32. And, uh, and so I've been in for almost 11 years, a little over 11 years. But the, the level of leadership, the quality of leadership that I studied under and I've served under is just amazing. And when I came out and I looked at the political and business landscape, in the business field, you see strong leaders, but you don't see too many of them stepping up into mm -hmm. the political arena. No wonder. I mean, the political arena is fraught with um, all kinds of negativity and all kinds of uh, options. I mean, potential for people to be drawn into arguments and, and fighting for their character and accusations, things like this. But somebody's got to do it. And, and I'm not the type of person that wants to argue and say, we have to do something, send somebody. 
I'll be the type of person that says, look, <clears throat> I'll do it. I'll lead. I'll be the one that goes. Um, I tell people I'm not trying to win. I'm trying to get elected. And that's a different perspective on this entire race. This is not something that's a career move for me. I'm trying to check a block that says, look what I did. I'm saying we need strong leadership, and we don't have that. I always tell folks there's nothing wrong with America. What's wrong is our leadership, and this is an election that we can do something about that. And so that's why that's what really what brought me to the table, why I decided to, to join in um, and, and really try and do something about it. The other thing is, too, I, I look at Tennessee. I love Tennessee, uh, the entire state, but eastern Tennessee in particular. And I spent a lot of time in the backwoods and the country and the, and the rivers and the creeks and up in the mountains and then traveling through the towns and meeting folks. It's just that's who I am. That's what I do. But um, I think it's time we, you know, we in Tennessee, we have values that made this country what it is. We still hold on to those values. And I think it's time that Tennessee values were, was, were interjected into Washington politics and not the other way around and stop having Washington politics interjected into Tennessee values. I think we could bring a lot to the table. We should be leading as a state because we still subscribe and believe and hold to those things that made us the country we are today. Namely, a commitment to God, a commitment to each other, mm -hmm. and a commitment to this country. So what is the uh, main issue that we have right now? We elect people that tell us one thing. Then they get to Washington, and obviously many of them, not all, but many of them, become, it becomes a political thing. It becomes a Democrat versus Republican, Republican versus Democratic. Thing. Right. And they lose, tend to, our present uh, government in Washington, both parties, tends to forget the folks back home. That's right. There have been issues that come up. They know how the constituents feel, and, uh, but yet they still do what they want to do. So, so your question is, what, what's the problem? Uh, character. Uh, okay, character. And, character. Uh, okay. Character. People get up there, and they, they, they do what I call going native, what we say in the military, going native. They start thinking differently. They start acting differently. They get pulled into that culture rather than bringing solid values from home and changing the culture that's there. They change, and they don't make the change. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. I think it stands, it really, to me, it comes from character, and it comes from standing on that char character. Rock-solid leadership does not change in the place that it's at. It changes the place it goes. And that's what we need. We need to change the place where national politics are are going running amok, where government is growing beyond its, its ability to even recognize itself anymore. It's it's stretching deeper and farther into our lives and our pocketbooks and our communities than it ever has before. It's time to send leaders and not party politicians. I tell folks that it's the party politics that contributes to the mess. That's why we are where we are. And, and given the, the scenario, if we always do what we've always done, we're always going to get what we always got. Mm -hmm. So we've got to start judging the people we send to Washington based on character, based on proven history of serving the country and serving the folks. We're down to four minutes. Take as much of that four minutes as you would like to talk directly to the Claiborne County voters. Is there anyone else that uh, in other counties will not be watching? You know, Tom, I'll tell you one of the things that's important to me, and extremely important to me. I look at where we've come from as a country. <clears throat> I look at what's happening now. As I've said, I don't think there's anything wrong with America. I think what's wrong is our leadership, and we can do something about that. And every person has the opportunity to participate in doing something about it. Too many people I hear from today say, well, it's, it's one vote, it's two vote. What can my vote do to, to really make a difference? Two votes that don't seem to add up to much. But the reality is that every voice matters. And, and we can do something about it. And we need to do something about it. Because currently, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, and President Barack Obama do not represent the values of America. They do not represent the values of East Tennessee. And, and when they champion certain causes, uh, like gay marriage or uh, an environment that's hostile to Christians and, and cancel a national day of prayer or are in favor of it being unconstitutional and then instead champion causes like uh, having a Ramadan dinner at, at the, uh, the White House or are in favor of a victory mosque or monument being built at Ground Zero. They're really dismantling the values and, and they're really spitting in the face of the voters because that's not what America is. What America is is a nation founded by patriots that dedicated their lives and their future to God for a purpose. And our country was founded in prayer, two hours of prayer and Bible study when it started. 
We've had 14 days of proclamation from Congress back then that called for days of fasting and prayer. We need to get back to that. That's what's going to make us different. That's what's going to make the real change that we need, a commitment back to God, back to American values, and back to what I think are Tennessee values. One last, two minutes. Uh, sort of summarize what you'd like to tell the voters, if you could talk with them directly. How can they get better and better uh, informed, learn a little bit more about you, sure. how they can get in touch with you, websites, telephone numbers, anything? Sure, absolutely. Uh, the website is <coughs> www.sendsavis, as in send me to Congress, or as on my webpage, I've got a dog tag that says Isaiah 6 8, here am I, send me. And so send Savas, that's S A V A S dot com. Go to the webpage. There is a video there um, that would really tell the voters a lot about what I stand for, where I'm coming from, and who I am. Um, there's a lot of information there as well. It's a great opportunity to share that with friends because that also can make a difference. One person sharing it with their address book um, could make a huge difference. And, and you can find out a lot about me. My phone number is there. I'm a business owner. I own the Acropolis Restaurant in Hamilton Place in Chattanooga. It's a very popular restaurant at the mall, so stop on by when you're down in Chattanooga. Uh, and once elected, you'll know where you can find me <laughs> on the weekends. And, uh, and visit me on the webpage. Call me. I want to talk to people. I'm not the type of candidate that's trying to keep from talking to people. I want to talk to people. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's been our pleasure. Uh, what are you going to be about? Uh, you'll be back in town on the 19th of October, but I'm sure you're going to be in and out quite, oh, uh, absolutely. quite a bit before that. Absolutely, uh, and uh, I think they could probably tune into your radio show because I'll call ahead of time and give everybody a warning. <laughs> you do join me from time to time. That's 740 on the AM dial, WCXZ, and it's been our pleasure. Thank you for coming. Tom, thanks for having uh, me. It's been a great day, and you're going to be uh, spending some more time. So if you see Savas out, just tell him hello. Just grab me. We'll be right back in just a moment. Savas is an interesting individual. By the way, he owns, I think we alluded to it in the... Uh, in the interview, he owns a Greek restaurant. Uh, when you go into Chattanooga, it's in the Hamilton Place, the big mall there to mm -hmm. the left as you go into Chattanooga. Very big restaurant. It's called the Acropolis, I believe is the name of it. But, uh, but he's also a major in uh, special forces in the Army, so an interesting individual. Seems like a very nice man. Uh, 